If you're a piano student and want to improve your sound balance, I don't think there's a better piece to play than this. Felix Mendelssohn wrote several volumes of these Lieder ohne Worte, Songs Without Words, where you have to play both a cantabile singing melody and some form of accompaniment texture underneath. And in the very first piece of the first set, opus 19, number 1 in E major, we find this a melody in the right hand and the bass notes in the left hand and these accompaniment 16th notes in between in both hands, but still not too many of them. So Mendelssohn's music is kind of at the turning point between classical and romantic ideals and he combines an ease of Schubert with a playfulness of Mozart but still in a slightly more romantic setting. His music is often quite innocent with the most delicate and beautiful melodies. And this piece is the perfect exercise to form that beautiful melody with mostly the pinky and the fourth finger when we also have other notes to play with the same hand, which is so often the case in romantic repertoire. So let's get into it. So it starts with a two bar intro, just establishing the key of E major with just the accompaniment. So it's E major and B7 as a dominant. And then the melody enters. So you need to change hand in the shift here. So I do jump up with the one and then play three notes in the left hand and one note because that's what feels natural. So I'm going to start with some thoughts about if you're playing this and learning it, uh, how to do that. So the first thing is you need to learn the notes properly. So play all the notes, uh, like to know where they are. So that the hands really know where they are. And that's a big step to do that for the whole piece or just start with the first section. And then the second step is when you know the notes, you can start to find this sound balance, differentiate between the melody. And the trick here is really extreme uh, unbalance, imbalance in the hand for weight on the melody. And really light in the other. And it's really a special way of thinking about the hand and the melody. And be careful not to be tense and kind of clench up. It should be a power to the melody that comes from a firm grip, but relaxed. And you can't do legato between every note. You use the pedal for that, but some of the notes will be a legato. So that's the right hand and then add the left hand. So the bass note should have some volume to it as well. And this is where it starts to get tricky to have these three. It's three things, but it's actually four points of balance because you have the, the left hand has two. on the bass than the 16th note and the right hand has two as we've seen so together like really just do it slowly and feel this weight on the melody by the way this trill thing uh, if you play the trill that's the hardest place in the piece because you need to take to change again to let left hand play all of the 16th notes while the right hand plays the trill. So it's a big change kind of quickly for that quarter note. So I would just recommend skip the trill to start with because it doesn't hurt to learn this texture because it's the same as everywhere else in the piece. So just play. I 
mean, it's still a nice melody. Then when you're really comfortable with all the notes, you can add the trill as a layer on top. OK, so when you start to find this balance, then you move on to the third step. And this is like, this takes weeks or months. And the third step is to take these statements with a really nice sound balance and then put them together and shape them beautifully to these nice long phrases. Uh, exactly the way a singer does. And it's so unfair all the time because a singer, they get to come here like the first thing after they just learn the notes and they can f shape and form beautiful phrases. But for us as pianists, it takes a lot of work to do that. And I mean, this is like considered an easy piece in the repertoire, uh, just a Mendelssohn leader on a volte, but it still takes a lot of work but of course, you can also just play the melody by itself. It's a good uh, strategy. That's without the trill. And like this uh, phrasing away, make sure this F sharp is r really soft. This is like the classical way of phrasing. <laughs> Which is, you know, puts Mendelssohn sometimes more in the classical sphere, is what I feel. But he's, he's a bridge, as, as we said. And then start over. You can uh, be more here. And kind of going away. And then start anew. But then also, the second statement is an answer of the first, like a new idea. And now the third time. Now it's a forte. You find these long notes. And then echo and answer. OK, so I think that's all <laughs> that I can say about learning it. It's a long process. And be careful not to be too tense in the hand. But really. It's a really great piece to experiment and find this sound balance because it's still quite sparsely written because you can it's enough with one note at a time except the first note you have melody and the bass and maybe yeah like a chord but then you can do it slowly. Okay so now musically I'm going to go on like uh, the usual sonata sequence videos now. We've seen these initial phrases they're in E major after these long notes, Mendelssohn does this trick. So he switches out one note from this. It feels like an E6 chord, but you know, analytically you can interpret it as a C sharp minor 7 first inversion. Because then you flip the minor to the major, you get a C sharp 7, which is a secondary dominant pointing to F sharp. And then F sharp 7 continuing pointing onward. And we modulate it to B major here. Uh, and we're approaching the end of the first section, and it's a classical way of going to the dominant. We, ge we get a final, like a round trip here, the bass starts to go down, we get diminished, some uncertainty here. But it's just a harmonic round trip going back to F sharp and makes a full cadence in B major. By the way, this last quarter note here, I do a version that I like. Um, I think it makes it easier to find the sound balance. So I do it like this. So instead of playing, like doing a big movement with the left hand, like it suggests, I just, because it's a too big of a movement for, th that I feel, I'd rather play it in the right hand instead, if I can. So, and I can do that. I don't even need to hold this. What I can do is play legato to the C sharp. I need to have the five. But I anyway have legato in the pedal, so I, it doesn't matter, I think. And for me, it makes it feel much more calmer to not have to do this really quick, uncomfortable movement in the left hand. 
Okay, so now we're in B major. Here's a repeat and you get the A natural, which is a seven, pointing back to E major. So then we get the repeat of the whole thing. And when we get to the second time, B major, instead of going to E major, we go to E minor. So this is like the middle section, like a developmental section, but short. So that's the perfect way to start, just a, a deceptive cadence or throwing in the minor. It's like a Picardy cadence in inverse. But Mendelssohn is too happy to stay in minor, he just wants to be in major. And he has all this energy that's like bursting and the music is aiming upward, so... So we go to G major, that's close from E minor, uh, like quite immediately actually. D7 as a secondary dominant to G, and then we're establishing G. This is D7, the dominant in G. Uh, and yeah, all the time aiming upward and just bass follows. end up on a G7 and here the, all this energy just comes out and the right hand roams free for a mini cadenza. And finally it comes down to earth with a diminuendo. And here we get some new melodic material that's gonna come back later also. We're still in G major and this just feels super cozy and nice. Do this like a six chord again. And again flipping it to major a secondary dominant. So we end up on this B major chord and it's a whole bar suddenly it's much less things happening for a bar. So it feels like we're waiting for something. And it's a magical moment here, I think, Mendelssohn magic, where he just goes back to G major. It's nothing uh, complicated really. It's like this oscillation or juxtaposition between two, two key areas here, G major and then B, major that points to E minor, so E minor and G, but the way he does it is just super uh, tasteful and delicate. So the trick to play this is to not be soft too quickly, like this diminuendo I'm thinking that it starts a bit later, so I can, I've written in a plus in my score here, so I can have come up from a high dynamic and then get the magical pianissimo. the G major, it's a pivot note by the way, B, B major, a B and then the same note in G and it's a medium away, uh, it's a classic modulation trick. So again B major now and here we get the E minor on the second half of the bar and again it's like we're waiting with this aching chromatic neighbor notes. And what are we waiting for? We should have seen this coming. So this is a recapitulation and of course instead of going back to E minor, that's the implied tonality. If you didn't know, this is the tonic when we come from here, but Mendelssohn flips it to major and we get this amazing burst of energy again. With the crescendo. 
sorry. Uh, that's a uh, real scary with this piece. So second time we don't have to do the trill. That's kind of nice in a way. It's more uh, more energy with eight notes on every beat instead. Phrase this. And here. So here we get this cozy place again. This is not present the first time. So here is where we get the entry of the melody, but it take, takes a new turn in the rec recapitulation. Uh, so it's the same material from the development. And again, it's a piano. When I play this, I kind of—it's hard to to let go of the forte, the the nice feeling of it. But it's important to go down here quickly to be able to build again. So really, make this as a kind of an answer, uh, second thought. Now it's starting to cook here. We get this E second inversion with this uh, dominant bass. That's like a new thing. So now we go for the second time. This same material that we have. And now we get more excited and uh, the bass have these chromatic filler notes and kind of chromatic filler harmonies in between. So it's quicker harmonic pulse all of a sudden. Finally. And we get the reward for all this waiting. It's just uh, soaring in the air here. Amazing climax. And like the trick is just appoggiatoras and some chromatic harmonies. B7 to E major and then D sharp augmented plus five with an appoggiatura and going to, to A major with an appoggiatura again. This is the sharp fourth going to the third and then down just A you know, six or F sharp minor seven first immersion but then he throws in the minor here just uh, the last 60th note an extra flavor a chromatic passing note to E I mean you, you could just play a C sharp that's like the this easy version but Mendelssohn does one extra step so the C natural is impo an important note and we end up on a G and an E major second inversion. So B in the bass. Now we're approaching the end. This is uh, approaching the kind of cadence. You have the dominant in the bass. But then we get this that we had the first time in the before the repeat. Uh, the diminished chord and the left hand goes down. But now we're in like more closer to home in E major. That's uh, now I just play the chord for some reason. So we reach the E major and just we don't want to finish the piece quite yet. So it's uh, some extra bars for a final round trip to wind down. So now we have the E in the bass as a pedal point, tonic pedal point. We go to A, so making it E7, a secondary dominant to A, and then back with a, the same C natural chromatic passing note to a B7 with that's a dominant seven with E as a tonic pedal. So like really a little bit dark chord, but. And the melody goes up again to the 
final cadence. And it ends very soft and reassuring in E major. So I can't recommend playing this piece enough, because once you know the notes, you can have a go at this professional voicing balance and shape the beautiful melodies just like a singer, but without words. Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets. I'm Henrik Tilham, and the Patreon shoutout goes to M. Massimila, P. E. Martin, and X. Guo. And now I give you my rendition of this Mendelssohn music. <laughs>